Hey Expedition Kids, I am glad to be with you again today. And you know it is another great day to talk about Jesus in the Bible too, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's pray before we jump into everything. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new and wonderful day to talk about you and your word, your big story, and another part of your big story. So thank you, God, for giving us the big story for us to learn from. Be with us today as we learn. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Good job. Good job. Nice and loud. I love it that way. You know I do. <laughs> all right, let's see. I have an idea. Today, I think we should start our lesson by seeing what Mr. Doug is up to. Let's see what he's dug up for us today. Watch this. Hello Expedition Kids, who likes to play with Legos? They're so much fun. You might like a specific set, like Star Wars, City Legos, Friends Legos, or maybe you would rather just use your own imagination and create your own design. Today I created a tall wall out of Legos. Oh great, the wall is broken. I'd worked hard to try to build it up, but now it's destroyed. The good thing is, it can be fixed. These Legos remind me of our true Bible story today. There was a man named Nehemiah. He wanted to help build a wall that had been destroyed. And it was in Jerusalem, where the Israelites' home had once been. They had been taken away from their home and given over to their enemies because they got caught up in that cycle of disobeying and not trusting God again. But God was willing to give them another chance. Nehemiah prayed on behalf of the people, and God allowed him to help lead them in rebuilding the walls in their city. I'm so glad that God offers his forgiveness to us all. When we mess up and fall apart, like the wall, we can be restored when we ask God to forgive us. Nice deacon, Mr. Doug. We love the treasures that you find for us. All right. Have you ever found something that made you feel really happy? Maybe it was something that made you smile all day long. Or how about the opposite? Have you ever gotten such bad news that you were so sad you couldn't stop thinking about it? Well, maybe you felt so upset that everyone around you noticed. And in today's story, we're going to learn about Nehemiah, who had that awful feeling. During the cycle of good and bad and okay kings, remember, good and bad and okay kings, those in the Bible, there was a time when God's people were taken into captivity. When they chose not to follow and obey God, they were given over to their enemies. Babylon was a country that took many Israelites away from their home. They ruled over God's people for many years. And God had promised that he would bring his people out of captivity. And he kept his promise. Slowly, groups of people were, re were released back to their homes. The ones who came back to Jerusalem found that the temple, their place of worship, it had been destroyed. As well as the walls around their city. This was a dire situation because without the protection of the walls, they could easily be taken over and given to their enemies again, right? So Ezra and Nehemiah are two books of the Bible that explain how Jerusalem was rebuilt. Today, we're going to learn about Nehemiah's role. So pause the video and look up Nehemiah 2, 1 through 10. Pause the video now. Okay, do you have it? Everybody got it? All right, follow along with me as I read it. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, that's a pretty cool name, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, 
Jeez, why does your face look so sad when you're when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? So the king said to me, Well, what is it you want? Then I prayed to God in heaven. And then I answered the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, How long will your journey take and when will you be back? It pleased the king to send me. So I set a time. And I also said to him, If it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. And may I have a letter for Azaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple, and for the city walls, and for the residences I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of God of my God was on me, the king granted my requests. So I went to the governor of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. Now when Sanballat and Horonite and Tobiah, the Ammonite officials, heard about this, they were very much disturbed. They were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. Hmm. Good job for following along so well. Nehemiah was still away from his home, Jerusalem when he heard some bad news. The walls around Jerusalem were broken down and the gates had been burned. He was so upset by this that he couldn't keep the sadness from his face. It was noticeable enough that when we went, when he, when he went to serve the king of Persia, whom he was working for, the king noticed that his sadness and he asked Nehemiah, like, what's wrong? And Nehemiah explained to the king that he was very sad because his hometown was destroyed. The king had, he was just kind enough to help out, right? He asked Nehemiah what he wanted. And Nehemiah prayed to God. I love that part. And then he asked the king for permission to return to Jerusalem so he could help to rebuild it. The king agreed to send Nehemiah to Jerusalem. Boldly, Nehemiah even asked for more. He asked for letters from the governor to be sent with him. And this would provide him with safe travels that could be dangerous otherwise. And he also asked the king for wood that would help to rebuild the gates around the city. And the king granted his requests, all of them. You know, I think it is time for you all to show us how well you listened. You are amazing listeners. So if you remember the answer to these questions, I will give you a big round of applause. Now, if you remember the answer to these questions, maybe some wise ones all around. <laughs> all right, try to answer these questions.
great. How many of you got wise ones? <laughs> Nehemiah knew that people had done wrong. They had left God out of their lives for too long. He repented on behalf of the people. What does that mean, repented? Do you remember? We've talked about it in the past, but it has been a while. It means saying that you're sorry, but meaning it deep, deep down in your heart and never repeating that same sin again. He told God how sorry he was for their behavior. God was with Nehemiah, and as he approached the king, he asked for his supplies. And God moved, did more than just give them things they needed to rebuild too, didn't he? He forgave them. He restored the people to their home. Nehemiah got to be a big part of this. When he went back to Jerusalem, he had the hard task of organizing and leading the people to fixing the walls and the gates and to make the city safe again. But with God's help, he accomplished this goal. We, we are a lot like the Israelites, aren't we? We follow God. But then we forget about him sometimes, and that can get us into trouble. Just like God forgave his people long ago, he forgives us still today, thank goodness. When we mess up, we can repent. We can tell God we are sorry for doing wrong, and he forgives and he restores us. That is pretty awesome. We do serve a mighty God, don't we? All right, let's pray before we go. Heavenly Father, thank you for the story of Nehemiah in your true good storybook, the Bible. Thank you for telling us about Nehemiah in there, in the way that he repented, in the way that he prayed to you first before he even asked the king for the things he wanted. Wow. And thank you for softening the king's heart. And thank you, God, for helping us and forgiving us when we need that. And help us always to repent when we need to. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's see. Um, I have not counted the book of Nehemiah. So let me count it real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Ezra and Nehemiah are books 15 and 16. Yes, we're doing really good. All right, I'm going to see you next week. Um, remember, always, Jesus loves you, and so do I. See ya.